So many recipes, so little time. Welcome to Cooking Corner with Giuseppe Crivivoli. This week for you, we're trying something a little different. Instead of giving you a whole bunch of ingredients to make a dish from scratch, we're going to be improving on two pre-existing box mixes. Naturally, the recipes I'm talking about are those for cornbread and devil's food cake. So in terms of ingredients for the cornbread, what you're going to need are vegetable oil, milk, some butter, a can of creamed corn, some eggs, and specifically, Krusty's Honey Cornbread and Muffin Mix. Not sponsored by Krusty's. <laughs> Not sponsored by Krusty's yet. In terms of hardware, you're gonna need the following. You're gonna need a large fork or something to mix your batter. You're gonna need a large mixing bowl. You're gonna need a can opener. You're gonna need various measuring spoons and cups. You're gonna need a large pan to cook it in. You can also use a muffin tin or loaf pans, but that will change the cook time. And you're gonna need tin foil. As always folks, step number one is gonna be that's right, wash your hands. Go ahead, get a little bit of moisture on your hands, turn the sink off, get your hands nice and wet, squirt some soap on them, rub that soap all around, get it all the way on your hands, back of the knuckles, in between the fingers. Now, pour some water all over your hands to get them clean. Just like that, you're ready to start cooking. Moving along to making your batter, let's talk about how this recipe is different from what it says on the back of the box. Now, on the back of the box, it calls for one pouch of the Krusty's cornbread mix, one egg, one third cup vegetable oil, and two thirds cup milk. What we're gonna be using is two pouches of the cornbread mix, two eggs, one third cup vegetable oil, and one third cup melted butter, one and a third cup of milk, and one can of cream corn, 14.75 ounces. Moving right along, you just add all your ingredients to your bowl and mix them together until a batter is formed. So go ahead, add your packet to the crusties. Very few industries I think you could get away with calling your brand crusties. Make sure when you're mixing your batter, you scrape the bottom of the bowl and get all of that cornbread mix incorporated into your batter. When you finish, it should look a little something like this. Moving on to step number three, it's gonna be foil your pan and fill it with the batter. Now for this step, you can use a rubber spatula like I'm using, but the fork works almost as well. So go ahead, pour your batter into your pan, Once you've got your batter in your pan, you should use whatever implement you use to get it out of the bowl to make sure it's nice and spread out along the pan, especially in the corners. So take your spatula or your fork or whatever and start spreading it out, making sure to get in the corners and making sure it's nice and even. All right, everyone, the oven's at 375 degrees, so it's time to move on to step number four, which is gonna be baking your cornbread. Now, because you've made so much cornbread and put it in a 9 by 13 or whatever you put it in, it's going to take a little bit longer to cook than it says on the box. I recommend 30 to 35 minutes at 375 degrees. Let's get this bad boy in there and then check it after that amount of time.
and now we wait. All right, so it's been 30 minutes. It's time to check on our cornbread and see if it's done. So let's open up the oven. It's looking delicious and it's smelling delicious. Let's pull this out and stick a toothpick in it. It's looking good to me. I think it's time to take this out. Go ahead, grab your cornbread, pull it out of the oven, put it on the counter. Now that you've taken your cornbread out of the oven and given it a little bit of time to cool, it's time to take it out of the pan and plate it. Go ahead and grab that tin foil that you use to protect your pan and use that to lift the cornbread up and out. Now that you've got your cornbread here, you can cut yourself a big honking slice and slap it on the plate. And get ready to have the best cornbread you've ever had in your entire life. Just like that. Now we can start the second of the two recipes that we're going to be improving upon. This one is going to be a devil's food cake. So what you're going to need for ingredients for the devil's food cake is one devil's food cake mix, several eggs, some vegetable oil, one cup of part skim ricotta cheese, and water, anything but dasani. In terms of hardware for your devil's food cake, what you're going to need is the following. You're going to need a large fork or something to mix up your batter. You're going to need a rubber spatula to scrape your bowl out. You're going to need a bowl for your, for your batter. You're going to need some kind of cake pan. So I'm cooking mine in a bunt pan. You could also cook it in two 9x9 nine nine pans or a 9x13 pan, but I find bunt to be the most consistent. Now to go with the bunt pan, I also have flour and grease to grease the flour of the pan so the cake doesn't stick. You could also use cooking spray, but I find that this is the most effective method to make sure the cake comes out of the pan. As always folks, step number one is going to be, that's right, wash your hands. Go ahead, turn the water on, get your hands nice and moist, turn the water off, get some soap on those bad boys. Rub the soap all around, in between the fingers, on the back of the knuckles, under the nails. Get your hands nice and soapy. Then you can start pouring water on them. Some on that hand, some on this hand. Back on this hand again. We'll go back on this hand again. Hell, if you're thirsty, you could even have a drink. Delicious. Keep pouring that water out on your hands. Wow, there's a lot of water in this. Once you convince your hands are nice and clean, then we're ready to cook. Moving right along, we're on to step number two, which is going to be form your batter. Now for your batter, what you're going to use is one devil's food cake mix, two eggs, one half cup of vegetable oil, one cup of water, and one cup of regatta cheese pad skin. So go ahead, add all the ingredients to your bowl and mix it up. Once all your ingredients are in your bowl, you can start mixing. If you've got beaters, good for you. If you don't, a fork or a whisk would be good. Once you've combined all the ingredients, it should look a little something like this. Pretty much just regular chocolate cake batter. Before you do anything else, the first thing you should do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Moving right along, we're on to step number three. And step number three is going to be grease your pan. Now, as I said earlier, I'm using a bunt pan. You can use any kind of pan you want. Use one with foil, even better. But um, the key is that the cake comes out of it at the end. So I am using 
Crisco all vegetable shortening and flour to grease my pan. You can use cooking spray if you want. I just find this to be the best. So what you're gonna do with this, is open up Crisco, grab yourself a paper towel, go in there and get a little scoop of it, delicious. Have a bite if you want, I'm not going to. And then start rubbing that around on the inside of your pan. You wanna get in all the little nooks and crannies. Once you're convinced that your pan is sufficiently greased, it's time to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the inside of the pan and coat all the sides with it so that the cake pops nicely out of the pan. Once you convince you sufficiently greased and floured your pan, it should look a little something like this. Importantly, you want to make sure to get all that excess flour out of the pan, so just hold it over a sink or a garbage and give it a few taps to knock some of that flour out. Now, there will be a few sparse spots, but it should be fine. Now that you've got your greased and floured pan, it's time to add your batter to that and stick it in the oven. This is step number four. Go ahead, get your batter in your bowl, pour it evenly into your pan, and use the rubber spatula to help you. Now that you've got your batter in your pan, it's time to put it in your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now as for cook time, it can vary widely depending on what pan and oven you're using. So I recommend whatever it says on the back of your box, add five minutes. But importantly, check it constantly so you don't burn the cake. All right? I've got a butt pan, back of the box says 30 to 35 minutes. I'm gonna put it in 35 to 40 minutes and check it at 35. Let's get this bad boy in there and see how it cooks. Now we wait. All right, folks, so it's been 35 minutes. It's time to check on our cake and see if it's done. Open up the oven. It's looking good, but it might not be cooked all the way through. So let's have a look see here. Because I used a butt pan, a normal toothpick will not reach the bottom, so I'm using a plastic knife to check it. Look at that, came out clean, the cake is done. You can take it out and let it cool in the pan for a few minutes. Hmm. Now that your cake's cooled and out of the oven, it's time to move on to the final step, which is gonna be plating. For plating your cake, depending on what kind of pan you use, you've gotta get it onto a plate. I use a butt pan, so I'm gonna take the plate, put it upside down on the pan, and flip the whole thing over. A few taps to knock all the cake off, and lift the pan up. Oh, maybe not. Maybe give it some more taps. Oh, it's just a very heavy pan. All right. Well, that came out pretty good, I think. So now what you're gonna do just my preference anyway, sprinkle some powdered sugar on it. A little bit here, a little bit there. And it makes for a perfect dessert. Now, feel free to grab a knife, cut yourself a little slice of it, put it on the plate, and it's time to enjoy. That concludes this week's episode of Cooking Corner with Giuseppe Green Roli. Thank you for joining us on this adventure as we try something new on the show. If it was something you liked, feel free to let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, leave a like on it. If there's something you want to see on the show, leave it in the comments and I'll try to make it for you. Thank you for joining us and uh, bye-bye now. Now, as for cook time, I recommend 35 to 40 minutes and then checking it. Maybe with the toothpick make it, uh, Maybe with the toothpick method. Why am I saying that? Ready? Three, two, one, action.